connected. Good evening. Welcome to Woodsman Adventures. Uh, today I'm going to be installing a, a tankless hot water heater into the Forest River Wolf Pup. As you can see, the factory one here is just a six gallon tank. The problem with the six gallon tank is one person can't even finish the shower because as soon as you start using some water out of the six gallon, it dumps cold water in, of course. Well, then it cools it off. It just it's worthless. The thing actually quit me, but I did get it fixed. I found out there was a switch. We was out camping and it quit me. But uh, I got it all fixed up and working again. But it's just no good for two people at all. Barely one person. With this thing, with the preci precision temp, uh, we're going to have hot water, no problem. This thing uh, heats it as the water comes through. It automatically will light when your, when your faucet is turned on. Heat the water and you have continuous hot water. So, but this is the uh, Precision Temp RV550EC. This is their newest version. And uh, they've done some changes and upgraded a little over the last one. But uh, the install should go fairly simple. Uh, it already comes with the Shark Bite connectors to connect our water lines. And also on the version that I got, I opted to get the unpainted door. And the reason why is because they offer a white or unpainted. Well, this RV has a black, everything is black to accent, so I'm going to take this door and either paint it myself or have it painted black, so to match. And uh, so we'll go ahead and take the other one out, the original one. We'll take it out and get, re get it prepped and ready for the new one. We'll have to, because this is a larger size, we'll have to cut the hole out, which should be pretty simple on it. Uh, one of the first things you want to make sure you do is turn the breaker off to your hot water heater. You want to make sure that's off. Make sure your hot water heater switch is off because if it's like this one, it's electric and hot and gas. Next, you want to make sure the gas is shut off. And then after you got the gas and electric shut off, the switch shut off for it, you're ready to go. Uh, the next step we'll need to do is go ahead and drain the water out of the tank and the line so we don't have a big spill in the floor when we take the old one out and getting ready for the precision temp. So let's go ahead and get this thing started. Okay as you can see from the back of the hot water heater we have our cold water intake and our hot water outlet. This is a bypass hose so you can when you flush this thing out you can shut these off if you want to and you can bypass the hot water tank. So we'll go ahead and shut these off and then we can unplug this unit. A lot of these units will be hardwired but as you can see this one has a plug-in it's just plugged in so we can just unplug it there and then we'll have to undo the 12 volt DC wires that we'll be using again we won't be using the 110 on the new one just the 12 volt DC all right we're moving this plug out of the bottom here Oops. pull this out let the water drain up open this valve up here to let our water drain a lot faster by letting air into it. So because we have the water shut off inside by those two uh, petcocks, um, the only thing we're draining is out of the tank. The rest of the water in the house is still got, the line has got water in it. Okay, our next step is removing the fuel line. Just make sure that before you do this that you do have the fuel tank shut off. Then you can go ahead and remove the fuel line. Okay, we got the fuel line removed. Next step is we're going to remove these screws around here that hold the unit in. We should be able to get a hold of the edge of this. Be sure that we don't pull the metal out on the travel trailer. Hold it in as we pull out on this. Carefully. Like so. As you can see, it's got some, some uh, looks like hot glue around 
the plug where our fuel line goes through, so cut it out of the way so it will release. All right, now we should be able to remove this unit and set it out of the way. As you notice here on the inside, the uh, the hot and cold water, I went ahead instead of unbolting them because I got to have them cut off anyway. So I just went ahead and cut them off. All right, as you can see on the inside here, there's a support to support the other one set there. So we're just going to take the screw out and remove that. We won't be needing this on the next on the install. All right, I want to show you right here is our fuel line connection that should fit just like the other one to thread on here. This is our DC 12 volt positive and the green is negative, red is positive. And this here is our water. We have our hot out and our cold in right there that will connect these shark bites to, to the lines inside the RV. Okay, our new unit, the precision temp we're going to stick in here. It is 13 and 3 quarter inches wide. A hole that we're going to need to give it uh, plenty of uh, free play to put in there and uh, 14 and a quarter tall should give us enough room Well, this hole is about 13 by 13 so we're going to have to take some out on the top and the side here is what we're going to do this side and the top will be about the best place so we'll mark this off and then we'll take the saws on and cut this out okay you can see I got my lines marked out here so I want to just take some uh, blue tape and mark them off. Put a line across there to cut by. So now we have a nice straight line of where we need it to go. And also a good way to keep from scratching our paint when we use the sawzall to cut this out. Alright, first thing is I'm going to try to cut this metal back out of the way. And I thought I would try my Dremel with a little cutting wheel and see if that would work to cut this aluminum. So I have the, the Dremel here with the cable on it to get up here easy access. Time to change my cutting wheel. Okay, I've got my aluminum siding trimmed out all the way. So now I just need to take the saw and cut these two by twos out. Link, this one's already cut that length as you can see. Uh, you probably can't see, but it is. And then I'll put them back up in here and then from the inside I will uh, screw them on and then when I put this cover on that will hold the metal to the tube of two and everything will be in place. So let me go ahead and get the saw, cut these out. Okay next I'm going to take the saws off and saw out these. These are more like one by two actually is what they are. But this here is already cut on both ends and put in there but I'm sure there's nails from this direction so I'm going to cut right through here and cut up through them. And then we'll just cut this one across. We can put these same boards back in there. We should be able to. So we'll go ahead and take saws off. Cut that. Be careful when you're cutting that you don't cut into any wires. In here there is some wires that will be the 12 volt DC wires to go to the hot water heater so we don't want to cut too far and cut into them or any wires that might be up in here. And we'll have to cut the inner paneling right on this line here too.
Now we'll cut right on across this one by two and cut it completely in two. Like so. Then we gotta cut down the inside of this paneling. We're gonna take this inner paneling here and cut it right down just like we did the top piece. Like so. Then we gotta cut this bottom board along here, even with the outside metal. Okay, now we're back inside, and we're gonna put our boards back up here with some screws. The one that come out of the bottom, or the uh, one that come out of the top, right here. And we'll just use some sheetrock screws And then our one that came out of right here, we'll go right back in this spot. Like so. Okay, before I put my tape on, I want to put it in the right place, so I'm going to go ahead and mark this. And on the sides, I have about a two inch flange on the sides of the unit. So I'll mark this out two inches. And on the top, I have about a one inch flange. We're good and just just roughly get it close so we're not using tape in the wrong place right along that ridge then we have two inches over here roughly And one inch on the bottom, which one inch on the bottom is right about that line right there, so I don't really have to worry much about that. This brand here that I have is called Tacky Tape. It's actually three quarter by one eighth. It's not actually as big as I wanted, but that's all I could find. So I'm actually just going to put it double thickness. I've got 30 feet out here, so there's plenty to put along here and put it double thickness where to have a good seal when I bolt this unit in. All right, now we have two layers of the tacky tape all the way around, so we should be good on our seal. We'll go ahead and slide the unit in. Okay, now we'll put the screws in the outside here. And I'm just using the screws that come out of the original water heater to do this. Some attack you tape and make sure all the uh, any holes around it are plugged up. We don't want no leaks, so just make sure these corners are good and sealed. Okay, it didn't, uh, my original screws wasn't enough, so I'm going to use a few sheetrock screws, screws to finish it up. And then I'll take a knife and trim this putty around the outside. 
trim off the excess. Do that all the way around. Then we'll go inside and finish it. Okay, now we're going to take our propane and connect it. I took the line. It's actually plenty long because it, on the other unit it was on the outside where it connected. Come from the inside into the unit connected so there's plenty. Coiled it around carefully so I don't kink this line. And then got it lined up where it's nice and straight with this one. And then all I have to do is thread this on. Keep our line straight as we tighten this. And now our propane is connected. And we'll check this for leaks here in just a little bit. Right now we want to go ahead and connect the hot water and the cold water. Okay, so to put the shark bite on, on the inside of this there's a small tube. And pretty much you just want to take it over your, over your line get it where it's nice and straight and goes on easy and then just push it on all the way till it stops and then the same way this is the blue so we're, this is the cold input we're going to connect it on the bottom make sure our shark bite is straight and just push it on and we'll do the same thing on the top one here so we'll put our shark bite on here first and then scoot this line, push our shark bite on like that. It's a really snug fit, but I believe it's going to work just fine. And our gas line is not actually touching our fuel line, so we should be good there. Okay, now what we're going to do is test our wires that come off our old unit. And I believe it to be green is going to be ground and red will be positive. Be sure not to touch them together or you're going to blow a fuse. So we take our multimeter, set on DC, put the red on positive. There we go. That is definitely 13.71 uh, volts DC. And you can tell that I'm not backwards because if you reverse the wires, put the ground on the positive here, then it will say minus. You don't want that. So this tells us that our green is our negative and our red is our positive. Just like the wires on the unit here. So we're going to just about connect them color for color and we'll be good to go. You could use wire nuts on this. I prefer to go ahead and make a solid connection with these butt connectors. And this is also connected this green and this red here is also run in there and connected to the switch on the original for the original hot water so I can turn this off from that switch in there like you normally would on your RV and I can turn this off and on if I want to. Make sure we twist these up good and we're going to go green for green. And we'll do red for red. Okay, now we're connected. Our power is actually turned off right now, so I'll have to turn the switch back on. And then we'll turn the water on and the propane on and test this thing out. Okay, on this blue wire that I'm not using, I'm going ahead and sticking a butt connector on it. That way it won't be a uh, an exposed end and it will be nice and safe. Okay, inside of the sink, I have turned the water on. I want to make sure on the hot water line and the cold water line, just go ahead and make sure there's no air rented enough that we're bleeding the air out of the lines. And also, you want to keep a check on your connections on the back of the water heater, make sure you don't have a leak. So, we should be air free now. We'll shut this off. Okay, now we have our Lines turned on here, and we just want to make sure that it's not leaking, and it's not. I've got both lines uh, turned on, so we're good to go on leaks. Now we'll check the gas for a leak here. Uh, just all I got in this bottle, just some soapy water. Just some uh, dishwashing liquid works great. Mixed in water, and we'll just make sure we don't get a lot of white bubbles. If we get a lot of white bubbles, we've not got this straight or tightened on there good. But you definitely don't want a propane leak. 
So it looks like we're good to go on the leaks, no water leaks. We're ready to turn this unit on and try it out. Okay, now that we've checked for no leaks, all we should have to do is turn on our switch here, which is our for our hot water heater, that the red and the green wire uh, supplies power and ground to it, and then we'll go outside and make sure if it's coming on. Okay, to turn it on, we just need to turn on the hot water. Make sure there's nothing where it's going to run over. Get the hot water running, and it should light out there if everything's right. All right, it kicked on. I can already hit tell. Oh, that's hot air too right there. So we're already heating water. Um, I just come straight out. That's hot air, and uh, the water's circulating through it because I got the hot water on. I'm so impressed with how easy this was. Let's go inside and see if we got hot water. Oh wow. Yeah, that's hot, hot. So, yeah, I can't believe we already got hot water that fast. That is so impressive. Just turned it on. We already got hot water. Everybody, good times have come our way, thanks to Precision Temp. Well, let's turn this off and finish this video up. Okay, here I have the door that goes on here. Just like so, it'll slide up on these bottom pegs like so so that's all there is to the door and I'm not actually gonna put it on right now I'm gonna, have, I'm gonna paint this thing um, it didn't they didn't put the hardware in it because it's uh, not painted yet so after I get it painted black then I'll put the hardware in it and it's gonna look great on here all right there we go and like I say one of the worst things about the RV uh, it's kind of a love-hate thing is we love the fact that we got hot water, but we also hate that we don't have enough hot water. And with this thing on demand, tankless hot water heater from Precision Temp, um, we're going to have endless hot water, which is going to be super uh, for both of us to take shower and not ever have the cold water again. Problem solved, and uh, I can't be more happy. One thing nice is because you're not constantly heating the tank, when this thing sets for days or if you know if we're gone if it's on um, or during the day when we're gone at work well it's kicking on and off and heating the tank so a lot of RVers say that they use about 50% less actually propane than they do on the uh, tanked hot water heater over a tankless so this this will be a nice savings too and uh, I tell you my wife is gonna love being able to take a 30 minute shower if she wants however long she wants without having to worry about running out water. Um, I thank so much for Precision Tim for sending this over for install video and review and uh, it's great dealing with them. They're super people. If you need help, technical, technical support, they got super people there on hand to help you. Uh, nice friendly people and uh, just check them out. I'm, I got some uh, links that we'll put below to Precision Temp and where you can check this out. But this is the RV 550 EC from Precision Temp and uh, I thank you all for watching Woodsman Adventures we'll do a review video of this after, later after we use it some and actually we're going to camping for another week so uh, we'll be using this all week when we go camping it's going to be great uh, not to have to run to the showers at the campground we'll be able to just do our showers right here because we're going to have endless hot water so thank you all for watching click the thumbs up stay tuned for some more videos on this precision temp. Uh, please subscribe to the channel if you're not a subscriber. And I'll catch you all in the next video. Right on. Mm -hmm.